Hello, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the e-permit workshop hosted by the Academic Affairs Committee on Macaulay Scholars Council. Tonight, we're gonna to be discussing navigating cross-campus registration within the CUNY system. My name is Zobia. I'm a student at City College, class of 2023. And we're going to continue with introductions of the rest of the committee members on the Academic Affairs Committee and tell you a little bit about the process tonight. Hi, everybody. My name is Natanel. Um, I'm a current senior at CCNY um, and a psychology major. Um, I'm going to pass it off to Joey. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Joey. I'm a sophomore at John Jay and a prospective applicant to CUNY BA. Uh, Leila? Hi, everybody. My name is Layla. I'm currently a sophomore at Hunter College, and obviously I'm on the Academic Affairs Committee. So, yeah. Um, I could go. I'm Ben Ross. I am a uh, I'm the advisor liaison at Macaulay, and uh, I work at Macaulay Central as well as at some campuses. Nice to see everybody. Thanks, Ben. Ben is going to be one of our panelists tonight, and we're going to be introducing Ben again, as well as the rest of the panelists, right after our presentation. All right, so um, we're going to go over what an e-permit is and how you can obtain one. So an e-permit is essentially a request that you put in to CUNY first um, if you're a student at a CUNY campus, but you want to take classes at another CUNY campus. Um, there are a lot of rules that go into e-permits, so we're going to be um, going over those rules. Um, but in the meantime, we also want to distribute um, this PDF uh, in the chat. Please save this PDF. It's really important and really useful. Um, it's going. It's a link to a PowerPoint that essentially goes through um, the step-by-step uh, -step kind of thing on how to put in a request um, through uh, e-permit on CUNY First. Um, so if you have any questions about that, be sure to uh, let us know, but we're not going to go over it right now because it's going to take up too much time. So um, we want to uh, go over some of the registration dates because this is really important. Um, CUNY VA, uh, sorry, not CUNY VA, uh, e-permit uh, relies on, um, the when you e-permit will rely on, um, you know, when the registration date is. So you have to abide by the registration dates of the campuses that you want to enroll in, as well as your own. Um, so you're only able to register after both of the campuses um, registration dates have passed. So um, if you need to, please screenshot this slide for summer 2022 registration dates from uh, the CUNY campuses. Um, you're actually, most of the campuses are already like done in terms of um, summer 22 registration, but John Jay is one of the later ones. Um, so you, if you need to, please screenshot this slide. Um, yeah, so you can move to the next one. Um, and be sure to screenshot this slide. This is the more important one, which is about fall 2022 registration dates um, for each of the CUNY campuses. Some of the campuses have already um, had their fall registration open already, um, but others are still um, not confirmed yet. That is John Jay and Queens. So we want to tell you to keep in mind that some of these dates are tentative and you should ask your advisor and slash or email the advisors of the other campus that you're looking to um, enroll in just to make sure that the advising dates are correct. So an important thing for when you're trying to get an e-permit class is to ensure that your e-permit request is approved. So to make sure you're eligible to use the e-permit, so the first thing you have to do is make sure that you are eligible to use the e-permit approval request system. So you have, like you have to um, meet these requirements. Um, you have to be a matriculated student currently in attendance at a CUNY college. So basically your home college. Um, you, you're an undergraduate student with a minimum cumulative GPA of at least 2.0. Graduate students, which aren't really on this call, you have to have a minimum of 3.0, but uh, Macaulay does offer that Macaulay Public Health um, and Journalism Pipeline 4 plus 1 uh, graduate student program. So I, like this rule applies to you. Um, a student cannot have any holds on his or her account. So that's like basically, um, sorry about that. It's basically uh, if you have to pay any, like your, any dues, that's really how you get a hold on your account. Um, you, a student must uh, meet all the home college registration requirements. And then any newly admitted um, Macaulay Honors College students or CUNY BA students have to meet with their advisor. If you're not a non-degree student, you won't be um, approved. 
So when you can be permit, you must finish with your first semester so you can actually have a GPA. So any first semester freshman on this call, which there probably aren't, you can't e-permit. E um, and then when you should slash shouldn't e-permit, if you want to retake a class that you didn't do well on a, and at a professor at another camp campus is known to be good at teaching it, you can. Um, if you want to explore uh, other campuses in general, uh, if it fits your schedule more to take a class at another campus, you should not e-permit for core classes that are directly related to your major. So let's say if you're a pre-med student and you're taking bio 100, you shouldn't e-permit that class. You should take it at your home campus. Um, but also just make sure you talk to your, to your pre-med advisor about that because some different campuses have different rules and you, you should not do it in your last semester because it could delay your graduation. So, um, I just want to go over the pros and cons for uh, e-permitting. So some pros allow you to be, um, it allows you to be more flexible with your schedule. You can take classes with a professor that is more effective at teaching, um, allows you to be more integrated with the CUNY community. If you're taking classes on other, uh, on other campuses, especially as a Macaulay student, you know, like a lot of people want to uh, be in touch with our other, with the other eight campuses. Um, and then cons are you would need to verify with your department if that's okay. And then make sure that you're not taking too many outside of your home campus because they could just mess up with your credits. Okay. Um, hi everybody. So now I'm just gonna talk about following up with the RE permit. So as Lila said before, the most, one of the most important parts of um, the e permit process is um, following up with your advisor. Uh, make sure you ask those questions because at the end of the day, your advisors are here to help you. Um, now, one really easy way to make sure that you're registering for a proper, the proper class when you're searching for an e-permit is by utilizing the course equivalence feature on CUNY First, um, which I will show you guys on the next slide, but we'll, I'll explain that when I get there, so don't worry about that. Um, um, the next thing is um, to follow up with your e-permit on the status page. So once you guys do submit an e-permit, um, it does need to get approved, I believe, from two sides usually from your home campus and from the host. So if I'm a student at City College and I wanna take a class at Baruch, um, both schools need to approve that. So you just wanna go into CUNY first, um, into the page that you submitted for the e-permit and you can kind of see where you are along that approval process. Um, so just making sure that you follow up with that and if there's any issues or if it's taking too long for um, one of the schools to approve it, you can always follow up and see where it is and what, what if there are any issues. Um, and then the last thing I wanna say is after um, you finish that class, um, it's really important to just follow up with your degree works to make sure that your credits are transferred over. Um, sometimes there can just, you know, if there can be a little bit of a, a lag time for the credits to transfer over, which is fine. Um, but you just wanna make sure that you are getting the proper credit for the classes that you take. Um, so we can move on to the next slide. So this is the feature that I was talking about, about the course equivalent. So if you do go into CUNY first and look into the course catalog, um, if you find the class that you need to take, the example here is accounting two. Um, so if you find that class that you need for, your, let's say you're a business or a finance accounting major, um, you would pull up that class um, in the course catalog, and then you would press this button right here that says fetch equivalent CUNY courses. Um, and what that button essentially will do is it will show you all the classes that are similar to the one that you want to take at, uh, that, are, are, that are available at other CUNY um, campuses, whether it be Hunter, City College, or Lehman, or any of the other campuses. Um, and based on that, you can check those off um, and you can apply for the e-permit in that way. Um, but yeah, the course equivalency is a really great tool, um, especially getting approved throughout the process if it is an equivalent. Um, I'm not gonna say every all times, but I would say for a majority or most of the times that's, you know, if you are searching for an e-permit that is an equivalent, it most probably will get approved. Um, but yeah. So th this is basically how to sign up for an e-permit at all CUNY schools. So the first thing you should do is just sign into your CUNY First account from your homeschool website. Um, then you click on the student center icon on the left of the screen. So it's as if you're getting, as if you're trying to get a new transcript, if you guys know how to do that. Um, you select other academic on the pull down menu and then you select the appropriate term and you press add permit and you click continue. 
then you select the general elective for the permit type, um, select hosts, uh, then Macaulay, career, subject, catalog, catalog number, and then submit for approval. Sorry if my mic is like being scratchy. Um, once your e-permit has been approved, you'll re receive instructions from the college that you've applied for um, to complete the registration process on CUNY first. Uh, I would recommend like just taking a picture of the slide because like, you know, just you can reference it later. Um, but yeah. Okay, now I just want to briefly talk about the e-permit process for Macaulay students. If you are applying um, for an e-permit at Macaulay Honors College. Um, so as I'm sure you guys know, Macaulay does offer um, a bunch of classes, whether it be the cross campus seminars or some of the upper level honors courses. Um, if you guys do want to take one of those Macaulay classes, obviously you need to apply for an e-permit in order to take those. So obviously, like I said before, the most important part of this whole process is talking to your advisor. Um, I know different campuses have different methods of you know, signing people up for these classes in addition to signing up for the e-permit. So it's always important to just speak to your advisor. Um, but the next um, important thing to note here is that when you are applying for the e-permit, it would be a little bit of a different process. You wouldn't um, necessarily use the course equivalent feature that I mentioned before. Um, rather, you would go to, um, when you are going to the e-permit menu on CUNY First, you would go to um, add e-permit, um, almost like you're filling out a blank application. Um, and then for the host college, you would select um, Macaulay. Um, and then for general, um, for the permit type, you would select general elective. Um, and then usually um, the course catalog pops up and you can find the course or the class that you want to take. Um, and then there's just a few more boxes you need to fill out. Um, and yeah, it should be as simple as that. Obviously, if you have any questions throughout this process, your advisors are always there to help you and guide you throughout the way. And just one more thing to note when it comes to Macaulay e-permits, recently uh, Macaulay has taken initiative to put out internal lists. So make sure to ask your advisor about those internal lists as well. Um, so that you are able to register for the class. Okay, now we're just gonna talk a little bit about the CUNY BA program. So the CUNY BA program is a, a program for interdisciplinary studies at, uh, which, which is primarily um, at the Graduate Center. I personally am also a CUNY BA student. I'm majoring in behavioral sciences and clinical health management. So it allows you to make your own major basically. Um, and what it does is uh, you are able to design your, your own concentration. So you're able, to, you're able to choose up to two areas of concentrations. Um, and those are basically what we would call your major. Um, a little bit about the CUNY BA program. It was established in 1971. And as I just mentioned, they are uh, stationed at the Graduate Center. Um, and the way that you would apply for the CUNY BA program is usually in your, uh, it, you could be like a second semester freshman, but uh, typically students tend to do it in their sophomore year. And the application, and requirements can be found on the CUNY BA website, which is also linked below. Um, and in order to uh, create your own course or create your own major, you first have to have at least 12 credits completed and a minimum GPA of 2.8. So that's why I mentioned that it's usually either your second semester freshman or in your sophomore year, because that is the requirement for admission into the program and you make your own area of concentration. And if you have any questions regarding that process, you can always email. The email is also linked in the chat, admissions at cunyba.cuny.edu. Um, okay, and lastly, there is a CUNY BA info session also happening soon. We will be linking that in the chat as well. Um, and there will be more information on the program 
then as well. And Joey is also a CUNY VA student. So Joey, if you have any information on that, please feel free to elaborate. Yeah, um, so I would say that I'm, I'm not actually a CUNY VA student yet. I'm still applying. Uh, so I'll be a student next semester, hopefully. Um, but basically the process is pretty simple. You just kind of apply. It's like a really basic application. Um, you send in all your transcripts, you fill out the CUNY VA form and you also write an essay. Um, and then you kind of go through that process. You'll be get, uh, given an interview. And then um, depending on how it goes, you'll, you'll have your things approved. If not, you just kind of revise as you go on. Um, and then uh, the when you submit your application, you will and you get approved, you'll be approved starting the, next, the following semester. Um, I'm still going through the process right now. So if anybody has any questions about that, feel free to put it in the chat um, and I can address it as a uh, current applicant. Um, but yeah, there's there's not much else other than that. But um, we'll enter the Q&A session now. Um, so if um, I just... would like to introduce yeah. myself. Before, uh, right before we enter the Q&A session, just uh, touching upon the CUNY VA program one more time. For those of you who are freshmen or sophomores and you're kind of debating or you feel like you don't fit into a major, personally, the reason why I joined the Pro CUNY VA program also is because I felt like I didn't fit into it any of the majors and what I wanted to study or pursue was not being covered. And so that if that is you and that is something that you feel, then that's the perfect reason to explore CUNY VA and uh, possibly, you know, create your major in whatever you're interested in. So now we're going to be hopping into, as Joey said, the Q the Q and A session. But before we do that, we do have panelists here for you guys today. Um, Natanel, do you want to? Sure. Um, so I, I just want to invite all the panelists to turn on their cameras. Um, and if you guys just want to briefly introduce yourselves, um, where you are among CUNY VA, e permit, um, what school, et cetera. Um, and then, people, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat um, or raise your hand. Um, we can probably unmute you, or if you would prefer, we can just read out your question to the panelists. Mm -hmm. um, but without further ado, Ben, if you would like to start. Sure. And um, I'm starting again. I jumped the gun before. So yeah, hi, I'm Ben Ross, um, advisor liaison at Macaulay. I work at the Central Campus and I've worked uh, in advising at several of our campuses. Nice to see you all. Oh, um, I think I'll pass it to uh, Dr. Lisa Brundage because she's the next person I see. Uh, thanks, Ben. Hi, I'm Lisa Brundage. I'm the Director of Academic Affairs at Macaulay. I work with our, the central office, I work with our central faculty to schedule their courses um, and then work with the folks at the GC to get them all onto CUNY first and make sure that they are ready for you. Um, I work really closely with Janet Fu on that, so I'm going to pass it over to Janet. Hi, I'm Janet. I work with Lisa and Academic Affairs. Um, I am part of the um, registration and enrollment process of the e-permits. And this year we're doing something new with um, pre-registration, um, which you should definitely talk to your advisors about. And one of the advisors is here and I'll pass it to Jamie. Thanks. Hi, I'm Jamie Weiss. I'm the Macaulay advisor at Brooklyn College. And I, um, I'm part of the, the e-permit approval process at Brooklyn College. So when you do your, when you put in your e-permit and then the registrar approves it, they usually send it either to uh, a department if it's a course that has to be approved by the department, if the equivalency has to be approved by the department um, or they'll and or send it to the, a Macaulay advisor. And this is different on different campuses. So you always wanna check with your advisor, but I can answer questions about the back end. And I will pass it to uh, Raphael. Raphael. All right, good. Uh, thank you and good evening, everyone. My name is Raphael and I work as an academic advisor at CUNY BA. And Zobia did a great job introducing the program. So we are in the business of curriculum development. In other words, in CUNY, you come to CUNY BA to create your own major. A huge part of it are e-permits. 
because our philosophy is that uh, students should really take advantage of this uh, uh, entire uni uh, institution and take courses across the university, uh, explore different campuses, um, uh, interact with students in, in different environments. So e-permit, as imperfect as it is, is a huge part of it. And a large part of my day is, is working with uh, uh, e-permits. Uh, so Q students in CUNY BA uh, get to register according to the class status across different campuses. So that's different. They don't have to wait till everyone in a given school registers. Uh, but of course, that we are obligated by these opening days, like you've seen them. So, so that's always there. Uh, so, thank you. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Great, great. Um, we already have a few questions in the Q and A. Um, but before we do those, I just wanted to know: Is it possible for you guys to briefly talk about pre-registration at Macaulay? Because I feel like that's a pretty important topic. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to. And Janet, we can sort of um, tag team on this. So I put the link into the um, the chat. I'm going to drop it there one more time. So this semester, we started a pre-registration um, process at Macaulay because as you could see from those slides that were shared earlier um, about the different registration dates, we didn't have a very fair way to give students across all the campuses an equitable way to access the courses. So what we're doing now is we have this pre-registration process. So if you go over to that link, you'll see a fairly simple form. It's due on April 13th. Um, and which is in a few days, so it's good we're talking now. Um, it'll ask you for some basic information and then you'll put in um, the class that you wanna take. If you wanna take more than one class, fill out multiple forms. Um, when it after it closes on April 13th, for any class um, that has more students interested in it, then it has seats available. We'll be doing a lottery um, and we will then create a list of students who are going to be offered a seat in that class plus a waiting list that will also be determined by the ranking in that lottery. Um, those students will be guaranteed a seat in that class. Um, if there are students who would like to take that class that um, did not do the pre-registration, if their seat's still available in the class, that's fine. They can do it on a first come first serve basis. If it's full, um, they will go on the wait list after any students who did participate in pre-registration um, or our, they'll go on the waiting list after those folks. Um, so we're hoping that this will kind of uh, allay some of the anxiety about whether or not there will still be seats when your campus registration date rolls around um, and also let you know pretty early on in the process who is guaranteed a seat and who is on a wait list. Um, Janet, did I miss anything in there? I just wanted to add that if you do um, receive a seat uh, via the lottery, the pre-registration lottery, um, we will ask that you file an e-permit by May 16th um, so that um, if you, then we can process your registration um, in a timely manner and then um, also leaves time for people that didn't get a seat and then we can open those seats up again. Yeah, so I'd add, um, fill out this form if you're, if you really want to take the class, don't fill it out if like the class sounds nice to you and you theoretically would sign up for it, maybe. Um, fill it out if you would like to be given a seat in that class. And also, like Janet said, you still need to file the actual e-permit. Um, we can't put you into the class without the e-permit, so make sure you don't miss that step. Um, and we will let you and your advisor know um, by April 15th um, what your status is on any class that you've pre-registered for. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, so there are a two, few questions um, in the Q&A. Um, the first one's a bit long, so I'm just going to break it up. Um, so the first part of the question is, um, do the e-permit prerequisite pre requirements go by the host or home college? Um, and then the second part of that question is, further, if the host college has no prerequisite prerequisites, um, a course equivalent in which the home college does not have prerequisites. Um, can you still take that course as an e-permit in the host college? Um, and then that course will fulfill the course equivalence requirement within your major. Um, so um, I think 
that's a pretty jam-packed question. So let's just start with the first part. Um, so do the prerequisite requirements go by the host or the home college? If any of you guys feel comfortable tackling that, go for it. Hi, everyone. I'll take a stab at this. Um, so, and, and advisors, um, you know, please jump in. Um, my experience is that it is sort of both in that um, your e-permit request has to be approved by your home college and by your host college. And so um, either of those two places in the chain of events can flag a course for being, um, for not eating, for not meeting um, the prerequisite um, that you have. Um, so they'll first go to your home college um, administrator in registrar's office who will look at your transcript um, and will say yes or no. Now that person and that process varies very, very differently from college to college. And so um, sometimes your e-permit approver could be one of your advisors. Um, and so, yeah, does anyone else from maybe one of a uh, Jamie or Rafael, uh, if you could add some details to that, because that's kind of a vague general answer. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll try to say something. So uh, I think the philosophy of e-permits was to bring the, the university together. And it, it, when it, we end up with like a European Union, um, so each of these members are uh, within, but also pointing to to their own um, uh, uh, side. So the way it, we do it in CUNY BA, it's always by host school because CUNY BA students don't have to um, mark or or take courses that they, they there is an equivalency in the home school uh, or they could simply do it as a new permit of if there is one they do it uh, uh, with an equivalency but it's always determined by the host school i i think it would be by the by the source the department academic department that offers the course kind of determines what are the prerequisites so that's where i would be looking for it but i don't think there'll be any dramatic differences between the two so that's where i would be looking for an answer and then trying to match it with the homeschool, uh, and, and I think that it will be the same. So, so that's my answer. Great, thank you so much. Um, Zobi, I think you had a few questions from the chat you wanted to address. Do you want to just read those off? Uh, yeah, so very early on, Annabelle had asked if it would be possible to share the presentation with you guys. We're not sure if we can share the presentation exactly, but the webinar itself is being recorded. So we'll be sure to share that recording uh, soon or eventually. Just stay tuned on Club Macaulay for that. Um, Great. Hey, Joey, um, I believe you had a question as well. Yes. So um, I actually just realized that King First is going to go through some repairs uh, over spring break starting on Thursday. Um, so I don't know what that looks like, but do we know if that's going to affect how e-permitting works? Like, will it change the process in any sort of way? Is anybody aware of this? Um, I, I will say as a long time um, CUNY person, and I know there's a lot of, the of others on here, um, the updates that happen to CUNY first are often um, kind of mysterious to everyone. And then you get there and you kind of try to figure out what's different. Um, one, of, one of my colleagues, um, one time they got a memo about an update to, to CUNY first and it was to a faculty and it was like, you know, CUNY first is going to be upgraded. Don't wait until the last minute to do this or else there will be problems. And so every time there's a CUNY first update coming, I, she posts there will be problems. Um, I have not heard of any substantive updates to the process though. I think, I think that what is going on with this update is that it's going to be largely cosmetic um, and the way that CUNY first looks is going to be different, but I think that most of the functionalities are going to be the same. 
Um, but I would just urge everyone to give yourselves a little bit of um, extra patience and uh, grace around this process when we come back from spring break, because it'll probably be different in ways that we can't anticipate. Um, but I know that everybody at Macaulay who works with the registrations and the permits is going to do our best to help make things run as, as smoothly as we can. Um, I don't know if Jamie or Ben, if you have specific thoughts about that as well. No, I, I agree with you. I think it's a cosmetic and uh, how you access the different parts of CUNY First, but I don't think that they're going to change the e-permit process in the middle. Um, this is a carefully crafted, cobbled together system that is, uh, you know, they're not going to stop us in the middle and change it. So. Can I, if I just kind of add something, because it all sounds very complicated when we explain this permit. So I want to tell you how, how it was before, before CUNY first, or maybe even before computers when I was a student. So when a student would have to run with the, with the paper form uh, from one campus to another, back to the original campus. And I think one more trip was required, uh, the final trip to the host campus. So there was a, a lot of like, physical travel. Uh, so, so now we uh, we are blessed with CUNY first, and the user face will be improved. Uh, I think that's what the change is about. Uh, but that that um, change with the with the person reviewing it, it, you know, remains the same. So if there are any holdups, is is sometimes because there is a lot of papers in the pipeline, and the person is just working on them and and improving as they as they go. And sometimes you know schools have. Uh, a huge, huge number of those. So, so I, th I think that's where the delays are more so than on the IT side. All right, thank you. Um, that was very insightful. Um, yes, I have another question. Uh, and this is actually um, from the Q&A. Um, so someone has asked, uh, how long do e-permit forms usually take to get approved? and yeah, so that's the first part. And then the second part is, are registration dates usually really late compared to the start enrollment date of the host college? Um, we can break that to separate parts. So just firstly, how long do e-permit forms usually take to get approved in each campus? Uh, I could say for my campus at Brooklyn College, um, you put in the permit and then the registrar reviews it and they make sure you're not overloaded on credits or whatever they have to check. And then they send it to the next approver and it could be uh, the math department or the chemistry department. Um, some departments want to approve things, some don't. I don't, I don't think the history department need, approves it. Um, and then when that is approved, it gets sent to the next person, which in our case is the Macaulay advisor. And then once I approve it, gets back to the registrar and they approve it. So, and you can track how long, you can track where everything is. So if you see that the next, if you log back on and you, you see that the next approver is your advisor, send an email to the advisor or, you know, the, the math department, you could always send them an email. Um, sometimes people miss things. Uh, once it's approved all, all on our side, then it gets sent, magically gets sent to the host campus. And then that registrar has to create the permit, allow you to register. So it's like people are doing these things by hand. Um, it could probably take a few days if everybody was just sitting by their computer and doing it. It could take a week or more, depending. I'm just gonna yeah. attack, I'm gonna attack Go ahead, to, <laughs> to Jamie and say for Macaulay classes, our e permits are processed through the grad center. So um, after it's approved by your campus, it comes, it doesn't come immediately to us, and then it go, we send it to the grad center. And then the grad center, um, they take a while to process the e permits. It could be like one to two weeks. And then um, Macaulay 
will automatically enroll you in the class. So you don't have to do anything and it will just, you are automatically enrolled um, and you'll see it in your CUNY first. Um, sometimes, so we don't know if we don't get your, e, that we don't get your e-permit. So if there's a holdup at your campus, we don't get a notification that it's coming to us or anything. So sometimes we get emails saying like, why hasn't it been processed yet? And we haven't even received it. So you do have to check with your campus, the process that Jamie just said to see where the holdup is um, on your side sometimes. Uh, Lisa, did you wanna add anything? No, I was going to say the exact same thing, but I just want to repeat the part that you said about how once the e-permit is approved at Macaulay, um, you don't have to register. I know a lot of campuses, you get like a registration appointment or something like that when you can actually go and enroll. Um, and you will be automatically enrolled if you're approved for one of our courses. Um, generally, we ask the registrar at the GC to do those um, once a week. It's usually once a week on Fridays. Um, but if you've been approved and we've said, you know, you're approved for this, um, just kind of hold on and you will be enrolled in the class. And once it shows up on your CUNY first schedule, um, then there's nothing else that you need to do besides come to class. Can, can I jump in and say that that is the process for a Macaulay class? If you're permitting an, any other class at any other campus, you are going to have to register for the class. Um, so people either go, either think all of their classes are going to be registered automatically or that they have to register all their classes for themselves. So if you're registering for a class at a different campus other than Macaulay, you will get a registration date and you will have to put yourself in the class. A permit is not a guarantee that you will get the class except for at Macaulay. Thank you for that. Um, I also want to interject this on a student perspective um i've e permitted a couple classes about like three or four of them and i feel like my average time for an e-permit um for the form going through was probably about like a week or so and the entire registration process probably took about like two to three weeks um depending on how fast i did it like before leading up to the registration date at the campus um, so I would say that like this is a very lengthy process. So if you're thinking of e-permitting, um, be very like clear about when the registration date of the campus you want to go to is, aside from Macaulay. Um, and then like, you know, plan ahead of time. Like I usually have the courses that I want um, planned at least a month and a half ahead of time. And then like I periodically check with like at least like once or twice a week to see um if any updates have changed, if you know any of the um, if any dates have changed, and you know if any information has been updated, so that I'm like aware of who I should be contacting and when, um, so that the process goes as smoothly as possible. Um, okay, and then the second part of that question is um, a little different. It's about registration dates. So our registration dates usually really late compared to the start enrollment date of the host college. Um, and I think we had this issue sort of with Macaulay last semester where like there was um, like we were only able to enroll like right before the actual semester started. Um, does anyone want to give any insights on that? Um, I'll say that because we're through the Graduate Center, they have a significantly later registration date than the undergraduate campuses. Um, we've been working with them to try to get them able to do our um, classes uh, you know, a little bit earlier. Um, it should be pretty well before the actual class is coming up, um, especially for the fall. This spring, it's a much tighter turnaround since we've only got the kind of relatively short winter break. Um, but you should, especially for the fall, if you are putting in your pre-registrations or your e-permits now for Macaulay Central courses, you should be registered, you know, relatively soon, kind of thinking like towards the end of this semester, you should see that course coming up in your schedule. Um, so it, it's a little bit of a, of a yes and um, answer that yes, it is later than the typical um, registration dates on the campuses, but especially since we have this new pre-registration system, you should be able to rest easy if you have uh, you know, gotten a slot through pre-registration and you filed your paperwork for the e-permit, um, you've got to just kind of sit back and wait for others to, to do their work. One thing that I do want to add on though, is that every campus does have an e-permit, like kind of hard stop cutoff date. It's usually pretty, pretty tight with when the semester begins, 
but if um, make sure that you are aware of what that date is for your home campus, because once that date passes, there are no kind of strings for us to pull to um, override that cutoff. Um, if your campus won't initiate an e-permit for you because that deadline has come, we can't um, circumvent it. But uh, definitely we also, oh, we have an, a dedicated email now for um, registration questions. So you can always drop us a line at um, registration at macaulay.cuny.edu and we will um, be able to follow up with you. Thank you. Thank you, Joy. All right, thank you for that. Um, and just to answer that from also a student perspective, I would say that registration dates are really hard to sort of gauge because it's depending on each campus. Um, like people on Scholar Council are working to kind of see why registration dates are so varied, um, but it really is like a campus sort of situation, which means that we don't really have any say over when those dates are. Um, so registration dates, depending on what campus you go to, will be late compared to the start enrollment date. For John Jay personally, um, my enrollment date is always for spring, usually in like May or June. Um, and then like the semester starts in like two months. So it's like really not that much, but you know, over the course of the couple of months, it's usually like, I was able to um, enroll in a class. And like, even though my e was not confirmed until like late July. So I feel like as long as you're um, active in terms of following up with people, you will be able to get your e-permit. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, Rafal? All right, so in, now it becomes apparent to everyone that it's a lot of fun with these permits. You wait and you don't know, and there's no guarantees. So as an advisor, I would just say uh, that it's always good to have plan B. So, so and not to stake everything on, on that one class that you're trying to, uh, to take and your entire graduation, because if a course fills up and that, that's not a good thing to, um, to do and, and, and then you'll be stuck. So it's always good to have plan B, maybe uh, have a, a course on your, your horizon offered by the home school. And then if the permit doesn't work out, uh, you can revert back to that. Uh, then I think what, what's important in a situation like that for CUNY VA students is to, um, that they always have to in mind to cancel these unused permits, right? So the permit was approved, but the student ended up not registering. Uh, so it's important to cancel it because otherwise you'll be charged. All right, thank you for that. Um, okay. Oh, can I, can I just add one thing? Yeah, of course. Um, well. If you're taking a course, if you want to e-permit to, Brook, to Brooklyn College and your registration date is very late, you can be in touch with me and I, I can help. I don't know what all advisors could do at all campuses, but we have some, we could help get you into classes earlier, so. Thank you for that. Uh, and Jamie, if you don't mind, could you put your email into the chat so that people can have access to your contact? Yes. Thank you. Emily asks, what do I put under host session? I'm not mistaken. I believe session refers to the part of the term. So if this was a spring term, spring semester, you would choose winter session if you wanted a winter class or spring if you wanted spring. Other than that, um, I don't think there's too much um, need to put a session or if there is uh, yes. summer sessions that are, um, if the summer term is broken up into sessions at that campus. Did you wanna add something, Jamie? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I jumped. Um, it's okay. You actually, when, you, when you're filing your permit, you're actually filing it for fall, you know, spring, summer. So that's not what the session is. And um, it's usually something like regular REG or, you know, summer session one or winter, something like that. And if you if you click on the little like, um, is it a little magnifying glass? There's like a little thing next to it. It should tell you what your choices are. Every little, every choice there has a little that little thing that you press on it and you click on it and it, it tells you what the options are. Yeah. So then you could power of deduction. So Emily, hopefully that also clarified for you, but also earlier we 
uh, posted the PDF for the step-by-step -step process um, regarding the workshop. Um, oh, it opened up for me, but this will also allow you to navigate that and it likely says when the host session, uh, what you could put as the host session. Um, Dina also asks, sorry, I'm gonna stop sharing. Dina also asks, um, why is it not recommended to e-permit a prereq for our majors? Um, so just from student perspective, I'll start off and then uh, panelists can of course add on. So the reason why it's not recommended to e-permit a prereq for your major specifically, especially if say you're not a CUNY BA student and your major is at your home college, uh, major requirements are specific to the department usually. So say for instance, you're a biology major or you're a chemistry major, um, those prereqs are part of their program. So it's part of that chemistry department's program in your uh, biochemistry major, for instance, right? Like those are the specific courses you would typically complete at that college and continue throughout in order for you to achieve your biochemistry degree. Um, so that's why it's usually not recommended for you to venture out when it comes to major classes, because your major is specific to your home campus and that's the way that they have kind of structured it. So it's better to take the classes within your campus because the material builds on. Whereas if you were to e-permit say a prereq course somewhere else, that department at that college might be teaching it differently than it's taught at your college. For CUNY BA students though, you're making your own major. So it's kind of like you, there, there aren't necessarily prereqs when it comes to that. Um, but if you do have a campus specific major, that's usually how it goes. Nothing to add on my end. I think that was a great answer. Um, I, I had indicated I would answer the next question, but I actually hit that by accident. So do e-permit forms for host colleges open on the start enrollment date or a few days before? I was actually not sure. Is that question asking um, e-permit forms I thought were more specific to the home college and the date is set by, by the home college? Yeah, so just from a student perspective, um, I think what they're referring to is like when you e-permit and you have to like apply for um, the actual permit, like when that application is open. Um, in my experience, it usually happens a couple of days before the registration of your home campus. Um, because for me, and I don't know if this is a little different because John Jay usually has really late registration. So it always feels a little like later than everybody else's anyways. Um, but for me, at least, like, I remember that my e-permit will open a couple of days earlier so that I was able to file it. And then by the time registration for my own campus opened, then my e-permit would have been approved and then I would be able to enroll automatically. Um, it might be a little different because having a later registration date means that other campuses have already opened. Um, so, if, for example, if you're like Baruch, which has a much earlier registration date, you might still have to wait. Um, even after the e-permit is approved in order for you to be able to e-permit other places. But it is good to um, submit your e-permit early. Um, you should check maybe like in like the week before your registration day opens, uh, before your registration day at your home campus to see if you're able to submit the application. And if not, um, then just periodically check within the next couple of days. Um, it usually opens within the first few days before the um, registration at your home campus. Um, and I think we have one more question. Um, it says for the host session, what should we select if we want to e-permit for the fall term? I believe that um, this is actually, like, you're able to find it in the actual um, application. It should say that like you, when you, you have to add your e-permit um, because you're not selecting a, you're, you're adding a new e-permit. So when you add the new e-permit, it should have a separate um, like slot that will go into which semester you want to apply into. And it will be the like fall 2022, for example. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers the question. 
Um, yeah, Rafa? I'm trying to figure out how to say it in a positive way, but one of the things that is lacking or a, a space to improve with e-permits is how to indicate when you when you're doing that when you when you're initiating the application that is not yet available that the school where you're doing the e-permit to has not yet opened and i wish when you're kind of doing it i wish there would be some like a pop-up window or a message to this to the uh, to the user and that you cannot do it right now the e-permit opens in 10 days but there isn't any and you just kind of end up um, uh, you know, clicking on everything, trying to find out what's going on, and then calling advisor saying, well, uh, I, I got stuck, help me. Uh, and it's very good to have these dates, but it's also very difficult to collect them from different schools when they open. So this for me has been the, one of the biggest challenges that when I assist students with e-permit, and then both of us are stuck and we kind of don't know why. And then after a long session and oh, it comes like it's not yet open. So I wish that appear right away as a pop-up window or something with the message when the permit will be open. Yeah, I fully agree. Um, I do want to say that like as God's counsel, since CUNY B, uh, like CUNY B and the e-permit sort of situation is an ongoing sort of process, uh, we do hope that at some point we'll be able to have a more cohesive sort of um, like system, like not like in CUNY first, but like um, within MSC, we hope to kind of be able to communicate so that we can actually give you guys the information um, as to when the, for example, the registration dates are or when the e-permit release dates are. Um, so that's something that we're going to be working on. Um, but for the meantime, we will have to suffer through some of the difficulties of the system. Um, Janet? Yeah, thank you. Um, Jamie's written answer to one of the questions reminded me about something. Um, when you e-permit for a Macaulay class, and if you want to cancel that e-permit or you want to drop the class, you have to do that through Macaulay. So you have you can email the email address that Lisa said, um, registration at macaulay.cuny.edu. Um, um, you can't just automatically do it through CUNY first, which I don't, can you do that through your other campuses? But through Macaulay, you have to do it through us. And then you have to drop it on CUNY first. Thank first you. you get, thank you, Jimmy. First yes, you get, thank, yes. Thank first you. you get dropped from the Macaulay class, and then the the registrar at your home campus can drop the can cancel the permit. And just to elaborate on this problem that Rafal has highlighted, and just I'm sure as the attendees can listen, the process does take as it's going right now, the process does take a while. So just make sure that you are on top of it and you're doing it beforehand because the later you file for the e-permit, the longer it's gonna take and the longer your process will be. So just in conclusion, um, make sure to be mindful of when you're filing the e-permit, try to get it in as early as possible. It's always to do it. It's always best to do it as early as possible so you can monitor it and reach out to the appropriate party, whoever that may be, the advisor, the registrar on your, on your campus or the host campus, and just make sure that you are on top of it and try, we mentioned this in the presentation as well, but try not to uh, do it in your last semester because it may possibly delay your graduation. Um, you don't wanna have that one course that you're unable to take um, and now you're waiting to graduate. Um, so just make sure you do that beforehand. Yes, Lisa. Um, I just wanted to add a little asterisk to that, um, which is that for springboard students, we're really aware of the tight deadlines with getting them out. And um, we will work with any campus that has a grade um, submission kind of requirement prior to, to ours. Um, and we're very, very fast with getting the grades in for springboard. So don't be afraid to take springboard because you're worried about the grades um, holding up your graduation. We want you to graduate and we will help you with that. Um, so just wanted to, to point that out since that is a popular class for seniors. And just very quickly in like one minute, Lisa, if you could just tell those of the attendees who might not know what Springboard is. 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Springboard is um, a two semester course at Macaulay. So you take it in the fall and the spring. It's required that you take both semesters. Um, in a nutshell, it's a senior thesis class, but it really focuses on interdisciplinary work that doesn't have um, a home really in your major department um, or the right advisor. And um, we kind of help work you through a research and writing process and it does fulfill the requirement for your um, honors thesis. And it's on Friday mornings from 10 to 1230 always at Macaulay. Okay, and I believe that concludes our presentation um, as well as the Q&A portion. If you guys, for the attendees, if you guys have any remaining questions or concerns, free, free, feel free to email um, us or uh, you can also email any of the panelists who have provided their information. Um, our email is scholars council, I believe, scholars council at macaulay.cuny.edu. Um, and thank you so much to all of the panelists. Um, these are all distinguished faculty members uh, who have joined us today. So, and they all gave their introduction. So feel free to reach out to them. And thank you everyone. Thank you so much for joining and coming and being with us here on this Monday evening. We hope you learned a lot about e-permits. Have a great evening. <laughs>